Adopt-A-Block program is one of many programs offered by Safe Kids Now, a nationwide organization. Stephanie Mann is the executive director of that organization. Today, you'll have the honor of attending one of her programs. Please join us for the Adopt-A-Block program from Safe Kids Now. I'm, um Barbara Williams, and I, and I want to introduce Stephanie Mann. Say she's a crime prevention specialist, and she's worked in this arena. And she's also one of the pioneers of the neighborhood walk. So, Miss Stephanie Mann, would you give her a hand as she comes? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I am just so impressed with what Dr. Barbara has been doing today. I, I attended her earlier workshop on intergenerational ministry. That has to do with how we interact with our different generations. And I wish our room was filled with young people today because this is a fantastic way to get young people in your church involved because that is what's going to change. Uh, it's going to be the young people that make the big changes here. And uh, Dr. Barbara mentioned about uh, Neighborhood Watch. And I thought I would just tell you, uh, 10 people in my community of 17,500 turned our city around without a police department. <laughs> that means the people that are in this room, you have so much more power than you think you do. Because when we got started, and what we had, we had 400 burglaries in a, in a town, unincorporated, with 17,000 people, and we just kind of went, okay, we don't have a police department, now what are we gonna do? Well, what we did, we got together and we said, all right, we've got to get the neighborhoods organized. We've got to get people looking out for each other. We've got to get people communicating. We've got to build trust back into the neighborhood. And we've got to let the kids know who's in charge here. Because when the adults aren't out there and looking around and taking care of the neighborhood or the schools, the kids will take over because they have no guidance. So uh, as a result of our reducing crime, 48%, 48% within two and a half years. I'll say that again, 48% within two and a half years. Wow. Um, we had so much publicity. That was 1974, uh, three. Well, we started in, in the beginning of the 70s. And by we wrote this in 1970, well, it was published in 74. And this, we wrote it for you. We wrote it for you, uh, the citizens in the community, to take charge of their own community, take back their community. This is the book that helped launch the National Neighborhood Watch Program. Uh, we didn't have uh, the police department, as I said, but we did have citizens. We got a lot of publicity, and everybody wanted to know, how in the world did you reduce crime 48% without a police department? So that's why we wrote the book to give it to anybody so that they can find out what to do. You are the change makers. There's no doubt about it. You are the ones that can turn your neighborhoods and your community around. And the change makers are amazing people. For example, let me just take Oakland, for example. There are 463 churches in Oakland. Are you aware of that? And it's the fourth most dangerous city in the United States. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with that picture. Yes. Right. Now, we need to think about, okay, the churches really need to get much more involved. And believe me, I have worked in the inner cities now and in communities all over this country. And I must say, the churches have been resistant. Resistant. They are happy to stay right where they are. A lot of them. And I don't know if you have noticed this, but it's really difficult to get them inspired to go out. And we're only asking them to take charge of one, one block, just around the church. It would even protect their church. Uh, and that is not a huge problem. It, it's, it's something that can e be easily done. The Adopt-A-Block Project said, Galatians 5.14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, as far as I understand it, it is a mandate, is it not? 
that that is what we're supposed to be doing. The mission, create safe neighborhoods by helping neighbors connect. Involved neighbors don't tolerate destructive behavior uh, and everyone stays safer. Well, remember the old African proverb is it takes a village. Uh, and it does take a village. It takes a neighborhood to put check and balance back into a society that has kind of wandered away. These are national statistics. And, and this is every day in America. Every day. Four children are killed by abuse and neglect. Five children a day commit suicide. Part of the reason is because they're so detached. They are, they are not connected. We need to build trust back into the neighborhood. We need to build trust back into all of our connections with our children. Nine teens are killed by firearms. How many horror stories have we heard? Have we heard enough yet? Isn't it time that our churches got much more involved in this? 200 children are arrested for violent crimes every day. Remember, this is every day. 370 children are arrested for drug abuse. Why are they escaping? I think we all have to ask ourselves, why are our kids escaping from who they are? Why do they want to take drugs? They're mm. alone. Many are isolated. Guess what? The school shooters, it's all the same MO. Isolated, alone, angry, don't know how to stay centered within themselves. So we've got a huge problem here. And then in, look at the students that are dropping out of school. Do you think this is a dangerous trend? 2,000 a day, over 2,000 oh a day are dropping out. This is, we, this problem doesn't just go away, it's going to keep multiplying. 2,300 children confirmed abused and neglected. Guess where those bullies are coming from? The homes. They're, they're being bullied at home, or they're being bullied in the neighborhood, and there's no adult supervision, and then pretty soon you've got angry kids, they're forming gangs, and guess what they're doing? They're taking it out on the community. Okay, and then 4,200 youth are arrested every day. 18,000 public school students are suspended. Okay, domestic violence. Here are one in four women are victims. Now this is part of the reason we have so many kids that don't know how to connect. We don't know how to relate. When we have people, men abusing women, or and it happens the other way too, we have women abusing men. This, kids learn how to bully. This is learned behavior. Uh, youth lack values, may lie, steal, steal, cheat. Teens take drugs to escape pain, um, desire to feel good. Now, when I've got a family that's really messed up, I am going to take something to make me feel better. And teens join gangs for protection and friends. Where are those neighborhoods bonding? That is what we should be doing. And, and adults have to put that, adult role models here. We don't need any more children that are guiding each other. And teen dating violence, do you know that that has increased dramatically? Yes, we're trying to raise your awareness level. So when you see some of this violence, you know, as Dr. Barbara said, it starts back at the home if we are not changing some of the things and, and connecting with people to help support them. Okay, and victims often feel helpless, isolated, and alone. As I said, those are your school shooters. Those are your kids that go out and do terrible things. I can't tell you how many funerals I've been to. I've been 35 years. I've worked in, the, in Richmond and Oakland, San Pablo, and uh, my heart breaks for people when every time I go to a funeral, I can't believe that we continue to do this. And we have, we, but we can stop it. Okay, here's your little boy. That's <laughs> that learned behavior. So he's coming out of a home angry. The off-centered youth. I think this will make it really clear. Because we have the aggressive bully on one side, and we have the, put, I call it the pincushion child. Now this is the pincushion child right here. He, he or she is in blue. And this is your bully in red angry little villain that we just saw. And here's your spiritually centered child. Now that is the child, doesn't put up with a bully, doesn't become the victim, strong within himself or herself, can speak up for herself, himself, 
and they do not become victims. These are the kids that are in trouble. These are the children that are attracted to each other. The, for example, this bully looks, or this bully looks for this victim, and this victim can only handle it so much. They don't know how to get strong within themselves. That is a spiritual problem. These are spiritually centered kids. We're not strengthening our kids the way we should. Here's a, a, a victim woman, woman or man of the bully husband. Uh, here's the gang leader. And with all of his followers, uh, he, he can gravitate to kids and he will protect them. And pretty soon you've got a whole gang of, of kids following the bully leader. Then you have um, the Taliban, for example. Here you've got the same thing. It's all about spiritually off-centered people. We uh, need to embrace what is going on around us, take a look at it and say, you know what, we can change this. Because you can. Uh, I have seen, for example, in Oakland, I remember 25 years ago, uh, one of the pastors, Pastor David Kitely, was moving out of the city of Oakland. And I had just been hired by the police department, and I was working there in his area, and I said, well, let's, let's think about adopting part of your neighborhood. He has gone on not only to adopt the neighborhood, but he has gone on to have with block parties and all kinds of activities. And that neighborhood does not have the problems that a lot of neighborhoods have because he's been actively involved. Uh, another organization, Bishop Ackland, mm -hmm. and he, he has a little bus and he drives around and he has a senior citizen center, <laughs> but that's not where we need to start. We need to start right where we are, that very basic place. What are the solutions? How to stop drugs, crime, and violence. Spiritually strong teens know how to stay safe and keep others from harm. They speak up for kids. The strong kids in our churches, we need to uh, encourage them to go out and talk in the school to other kids. We need to train them and say, go into the schools, reach out to the kids around you, because they, they can be very helpful to all of these problems if they know what to do and how to say it. Okay, create a network of support. Uh, I was very upset uh, when uh, the police first started taking over the our, we called our program, this program, way back when, we called it the Neighborhood Responsibility Program. The police called it Neighborhood Watch. Well, neighborhood, that's a whole different concept, connotation. It sounds like we're all going to go, yes. okay, yeah. let me see. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm not connecting with anybody. Yeah. I'm not changing behavior. Yeah. All I'm doing is I'm reporting to the police. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, and, and when the police have meetings and they run the meetings, they stand up like I'm standing up, because I've been to a lot of them. I've had to teach police officers. What you need to do is help people get connected that are, that are in the neighborhood. Make sure that they know who's here. And so they don't go, they come in as strangers, hear how to lock up their house, and then they leave. They're still strangers. There's no building of trust back into the neighborhood. So that is the important part that is missing in a lot of our problems. The police can't do that. Our churches can't. So here is a, a neighborhood, and there's a safety map. You know, all parents should be going through their own neighborhood. If their children are walking to school, they ought to make their own safety map so that uh, they know if there's a drug house on the block, and they know if there's a traffic light that's dangerous, they know if there's a problem, that uh, their, their children should go some other way. That is a safety map. The religious community teaches youth to be spiritually centered. Well, that's what I mentioned before. And then they don't bully, they grow strong within, they grow from their spirit, not ego. Mm -hmm. That's critical right there because so many kids are, you know, macho. We need to grow strong. Respect others, develop courage, character, and conscience. Uh, speak up without anger, be a peacemaker, network, get connected, and serve the needs of others. I think that's what the church is all about, is it not? And then speak up and take action. All right, for healthy families and neighborhoods. Reach out to neighbors. Uh, help create safe neighborhoods. Let, let me mention some of the real benefits here. That there are so many benefits in doing this. 
They really don't know what those benefits are. And to mention just a few, we stop fear and social isolation by getting people connected. Uh, children can play in a neighborhood safely if people are connected with each other. Uh, isolation can decrease domestic violence. Do you know that a man that's beating up a wife, he tries to isolate her. He tr uh, and sex trafficking. We just went to a workshop uh, on sex trafficking. People have to know who's in their neighborhood. That's right. And we've got to pay a lot more attention to who's there. Because domestic violence, sex trafficking, all of these problems, like drug dealers, it goes on in our neighborhood. And I want to tell you a story about Barbara Vigil. I worked uh, in San Pablo, and Barbara was furious. She came, uh, I was a coordinator for Contra Costa County at that time in crime prevention. And she came to our office and she said, you know, I am so upset. Our city council has decided, decided to screen off the whole park because it's full of drug dealers. And she said, I don't, I, I, I've got children. I want them to be able to play safely in the park. So we talked about what, to, what she could do. She put a neighborhood group together. They went out and sat in the park or walked around, took down descriptions, they took down license numbers, and you know within three and a half months, I don't even think it was that long, the, the park was clear, was no more drug dealers. And that was because uh, they did work with the police and said, all right, we don't want the fence put around this park, and we are going to report to you, but you got to make sure you arrest these guys and get them out of here. So they did, they cleared out the park, the neighbors went back to city council and said, you know what, we want the money that you were going to use to put up the fence. And we want you to put in some new uh, benches and tables for our, uh, for our, in the park because the place was dilapidated. The request was granted and within 10 years, now this is how exciting this could be. As a grassroots worker, she started that way, but in 10 years, Barbara Vigil became the mayor of San Diego. <laughs> so if we can develop people at the grassroots, and it's a great way to do it, have them come up from the grassroots up, you're going to see change in our communities. Well, this isn't going to happen overnight, but you're going to see some real change. Check and balance on children's bad behavior. Well, years ago, you know, when kids were growing up, people talked to each other. Well, that was putting a check and balance on children's behavior. You stopped them when they were bad and when they were little. You didn't wait until they were this big and they're gangs. So it's a little late then. They've learned how to do all the bad stuff. So all of us have to think about how we're going to stop the kids and we've got to get everybody on the same page. I've seen it work. I've seen it happen all the time. And people start speaking up. We need people to speak up. Yes. We need people to say, we you can't just sit behind and, and be passive anymore. We're going to have to take much more of a, an active role. Improve communication. Exchanging phone numbers in the neighborhood. Exchanging email addresses. If I see something suspicious, I might call you. Maybe I can't call the police. And I've heard that over and over again. Well, I'm scared. I, I'm afraid of retaliation. But there's somebody in that neighborhood who will who will report, but they have to communicate. They have to talk to each other. And then when you've got somebody there that will report, then people feel confident about reporting to that one individual that will call the police. So now you're going to take back your neighborhood. Your neighbors' best defense against crime is your neighbors. Uh, I've, we've seen them stop drugs. We've seen them stop gangs. We've seen them stop all kinds of problems in a community. And then help in emergency. We live in an area with earthquakes. And one of the things in the Adopt-A-Block book, and you're going to see this in some of our pass-outs, we have this sheet in here. We have information, the do's and don'ts, what to do, what not to do, what are some of the options, what are some of the things we can do. But there's a sheet in here that has earthquake information on it. All you have to do is take it, run off a bunch of prints, go door to door. You know, they want to meet people and they want to know who's in the neighborhood. So get the people together that want to try this, and kids are wonderful at doing this. They have such a wonderful um, 
ability to not have anybody slam the door in their face. <laughs> because, because they're kids. Nobody wants to really slam the door if they're you know, 12, 13, 14. And I've seen amazing children just go right up there and, and talk to people and get them involved. But you can do a survey just to get it started. And that is, maybe ask three questions. Um, have you been a victim of crime? We get a lot of discussion on that one. Um, what is your biggest concern in this neighborhood? And will you help? Not everybody's going to say they want to help. Well, Dr. Barber and I did a workshop over in San Francisco. And um, this was in the area where the young lady was shot in the chest. She's 13, and she was sitting on her bed. Anyway, the neighbors were frightened. It wasn't the first time this had happened. This is in the Bayview District. We got the minister. Now, we usually move right out and say, okay, now we're going to go door to door and try this. They were reluctant. They were going, uh, what are we going to find there? They were so thrilled when they came back. Yeah, I, I'd love to have you stand up and tell that one story about, about one of the... And stand by me because oh, yeah. we we did. We actually we go into your churches and we will tell the church, let's go back, let's go into your neighborhood. You're you're coming in these neighborhoods and you're going out. Have you ever stopped to talk to your neighbors? And so when we would, I told them yes, we would come over and we go door to door with you just to talk to your neighbors, not trying to recruit them to join your church. That's not what this is about. Right. It was to be a neighbor and let them know we're here for you. What do you need? And so the survey was we were going to take out uh, whistles. Now, the reason we took out whistles is there are many senior citizens in the neighborhood that do not have life alert. Mm -hmm. But if they had a whistle and they fell down and you passed by or the kids are, are aware that the neighbor is a senior and they have a whistle, when I hear that whistle, I can run and tell somebody something is going on. So we were passing out free whistles. Of course, everybody wanted a free whistle. Mm -hmm. But the church was right next door to another little uh, place. Then they told us, oh, there's some guys over there. We really don't mess with them. Uh, they smoke, they drink, they got drugs and the whole thing. Well, when we got there, we realized in San Francisco, there are, the houses are door to door, and this was in a community. And the little guy in there was fixing cars. And I noticed there was a lot of cars in the neighborhood, but the, the neighborhood not, was nice. And as we went door to door, nobody was having any problems, really. But then when we got to the young man's house that had the garage, I asked him, I said, hello, we're the people next door, we're the church, and how long have you been here? He said, oh, about eight years. We said, well, we just want to know what are some of the biggest concerns in the neighborhood. He said, well, we, we got some youngsters around here, they need some, some role models. No, nah, don't bring no role models from out of town. We need people like you guys, people like us just to tell the kids what they need to do. He says, I fix cars. I said, oh, wow, is that what you do? He said, yes. He said, I know the people next door think I smoke and drink. He said, but I, I can't do anything about people who come to my shop, but I fix cars. He said, you know what you folks could do over there? He said, if you would donate your cars, like you donate to other people, donate them to us, send us your kids next door from the church. We'll talk, show them how to restore them, fix them up, and then give them to you, and you can sell them and put money into your account. Wow. Hello. <laughs> and so, you don't know who's out there. Yeah, the, the, out. Same, the ones the church they had already told us don't go over there because they smoke, they drink, and they're okay. And I said, Wow, you're blowing my little hair piece off my head here, you know. <laughs> and so the guy says, And I tell you what else you need to do. You need to get some dirt bikes and get these kids out of the San Francisco hills and take them out there and they can go up and down the hills on dirt bikes and things like that. I said, Real, this little guy is only 25 years old. And he has his own business there. And, he, and the other guy said, yeah, yeah, we could do that. I said, well, how am I going to get him out there? He said, let me rent some vans. I'll take him out there. I couldn't wait to get to the church to say, you guys got a gold mine right next door, and you're trying to kick him out. Wow. <laughs> Many of us are doing that. And so I got his name, his number, and he says, we restore cars. Not only would we love to, we'd like to have a car show. I said, hey. If we blocked off this whole street, could you get your car show guys? To the, they're called 411s. Of course, we say 411, we think gang. 411, their car show uh, buddies to come and put their cars out there. He said, and then we would show each one of the little youngsters around here how we restored all of those cars and how they could do the same thing. We got back, yeah, we got back to the church and we said, hello, did you guys have good luck? The lady across the street, yes, the lady across the street is being evicted and she needed somebody to talk to, blah, blah. Oh, and this person over here. They had never talked to the people in their neighborhood. They were thrilled. They were thrilled. And when I tell them about the guy next door, they all were like, 
<laughs> they didn't believe it. I said, they want to join forces with you. Now, the reason you're not having any of your cars stolen, your houses broken into, my brother, is because we ain't going to mess with the man who fixes that car, are we? No, I mean, I used to do, I, I, everybody, you folks might be able to go to the dealership. I used to go to the uh, tr uh, Shady Tree mechanic around the corner from my house because that's all I could afford. And we could park our cars out there and nobody would say, that's what our cars That's right. Well, do, do you use the same uh, methodology when you are, when you have a church, if you will, that surround businesses? Glad you asked. Because if you're around businesses, you ought to be in touch with the businesses. But you then have the opportunity to go and really adopt another block. Go into a rural area or a partner with another church. The pastor may have a big heart and want to help his community, but he doesn't have the funds. So if you have the community where yours is basically commercial, but you want to go in and help that particular pastor, you can find him out, you can seek him out and say, we want to adopt your block. Or we want to adopt a block that's close to you. Or we want to adopt one of the blocks in our neighborhood and bring it down there. So when we say, who is your neighbor? Everybody is our neighbor. And we can take control of that neighborhood. Now, most of us, if it's not, if we're, we have seniors in our neighborhoods that are even afraid to come out. They don't want anybody coming in and nobody going out. But they need their garbage rolled out. We had, in one of the churches we went to in the city of Richmond, <coughs> They took the survey, what is the biggest need in your, uh, in your neighborhood? Uh, have you been a victim of violent crime? The lady said, no. Uh, what do you think we need more of? And somebody said, street light. She said, I just need a flashlight. So she was a senior, so what did we go out and do? Bought her a flashlight. And so, I mean, that's what we found out in the neighborhood that that particular senior needed. Or light bulbs changed or whatever. So smoke what, alarms. Smoke alarms, yes. Uh, earthquake preparedness. That We took out earthquake preparedness. A uh, little folder, uh, well, just a sheet of paper with the church's name on it. Not evangelizing, but just saying, in case of an earthquake, these are some of the things you need. And here's a list, and make sure you do that. And they were so excited because we knocked on their door, and we showed them that we are aware that you're here, and we care. That's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. We have seen where businesses will come and do a newsletter for the neighborhood. They want to have a safe store. They want to do something for the neighborhood. Talk to them. Bring them in and say, you know what? Well, we Could you do a newsletter? Do you have some ideas? Ask them for their ideas. But there's a lot of opportunity out there that we haven't really tapped into. Um, share talents and skills. We need to get back to connecting to mm -hmm. each other. Can't change the world but we can change our neighborhood. So I'm going to turn it back to Dr. Barber. All right, let's give it to Stephanie a hand. Yeah. Safe Kids Now is a nationwide organization and expanding. Stephanie Mann is the executive director of Safe Kids Now, and she has changed lives across the nation in teaching people how to protect their children, their homes, and their communities. affiliated with Safe Kids Now. Know that this is a remarkable program. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get true benefit out of it. And most of all, I hope you are able to activate it. Please join us for the Safe Kids Now program.